Well, good evening. It's a beautiful fall Saturday night, which we all know yes, means is. football. But in Louisiana, it's election day, election night. And our election night coverage continues as Louisiana decides. Welcome in, everybody. I'm Chad Sabaty alongside Jean Burns. And quite a busy October fall Saturday here, Jean. And we're very excited about the numbers which have started to populate. And we're going to decide who may win the governor's race here tonight. It could be a possible outright win, or we may be headed to a runoff next month as well. Yeah, we're going to break down those numbers, talk to uh, our pollster here tonight who's got some great information for you. Uh, we're going to send things over first, I believe, to Dion Guillory, who's got those initial numbers that we're seeing. Dion? Well, Jean, this is the information center, so all the numbers are going to come through me, and then I'll give them to you. So that's how it's going to work tonight. So let's start with the governor's race. These numbers just in to our newsroom. You can see Governor John Bell Edwards leading with 41%. Businessman Eddie Risponi, 29% right now. And Congressman Ralph Abraham right behind him at 28%. Now let's move this over, because there weren't just three candidates for governor in this race. There were six in all. Patrick Landry, a name you may not be familiar with, but you can see he has 1% of the vote. Gary Landrieu, 1% as well. And Omar Dantzler, 1%. This was the guy that a lot of people thought may um, shave off some numbers that the incumbent governor may get. But we'll see what that does coming up later tonight. These numbers just in. All right, let's go to the next race. We've got the, uh, the incorporation of St. George, a huge topic here in East Baton Rouge Parish. And at this point, those numbers aren't in just yet. This is live TV, folks. This is how it works. These numbers just coming in. The polls just closing. And we are going to really, really watch this because voters who live in the area that would be the city of St. George, they were the only ones who were allowed to vote on this measure to see if they do want to break off and be their own city. All right, let's go to the next race. It's the Lieutenant Governor's race. And you can see right here, Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser, the incumbent here, 76% of the vote so far early in the returns right now. Willie Jones at 24%. Now, our next race, the Secretary of State's uh, race right here. Now, Kyle Ardwan at 50%. You can see that he is a uh, holding the lead at this point. Gwen Collins Green up at 25%, and Thomas Kennedy III, he's at 20%. Also, the Attorney General's race. We can see here that Jeff Landry, 74%. He's the incumbent here. He is ahead of uh, Ike Jackson. He has 26%. Let's go to the Treasurer's race. We can see that these numbers are still, just still trickling in from the Secretary of State's office. The Treasurer, John Schroeder, the incumbent here, 69%. Derek Edwards, 27% of the vote right now. And Teresa Kinney, 4%. This is 1% of those numbers coming in. So it's still very early because it's only 12 minutes after the polls have closed. Now let's go to the Commissioner Agriculture Agriculture and Forestry Commissioner's um, election of uh, the uh, uh, race here. Mike Strain, the incumbent here, 63% of the vote right now. Marguerite Green, 16%, and Bradley Zonbreaker at 8%. All right. Commissioner of Insurance. This is one you've seen a lot of those commercials, those ads, those attack ads. Jim Donilon, 53% of the vote. Tim Temple, 47. So this one is really close with only 1% of those numbers in so far. So this is going to be a long night. We're just getting started. It's not even 8.13 yet. And so we've got a lot to really analyze here. So we want to send things over to Fred Childers and John Cuvion to really analyze these early numbers right now. That's right, Dion. Uh, that's what uh, John Cuvion, our pollster, has been doing uh, these past uh, few minutes. Uh, as you mentioned, this is just 1% of the vote coming in, John. But uh, you've managed to do some analysis, even with uh, these few numbers. And uh, what I'm noticing is interesting here is uh, you're seeing that uh, Governor Edwards, the incumbent for the uh, gubernatorial race, is running into some problems in some of the, the parishes. I am. So thus far, we have 29 of 64 parishes have reported their early vote in. And what I'm seeing about the only good bit of news for Governor Edwards thus far is when you compare his early vote tonight versus his early vote in 2015 when he decisively beat David Vitter, I'm seeing that he's running close to his 2015 numbers in Jefferson Parish, but in Calcasieu Parish, which is Lake Charles, and Ascension Parish, which is, of course, Gonzales and Prairieville, which has lots of moderate Republicans, which he needs, I'm seeing him run 20 points behind his 2015 showing. In the rural parishes, I'm seeing him run 
around 30 points behind. So what that means, given the data I'm seeing thus far, is we're looking at Governor Edwards sitting in the 40 to 45 percent range. I'm not yet ready to say that there will be a runoff because I do, of course, want some precinct data. I'm also seeing, too, that Abraham and Respond are neck and neck, but you are having a disproportionate amount of rural parishes and southwest Louisiana come in thus far. So to answer the two questions about whether there will be a runoff and which Republican will make the runoff, I would say right now it's more likely than not that there will be a runoff based on the early data I've seen from 29 parishes and 147,000 votes in. Which Republican, that remains to be seen because Responi and Abraham are a point apart. Right, and those are the two big questions tonight. There's a third question out there, and uh, I know you haven't crunched the numbers on this yet, but I just wanted to let our viewers know you will also be watching the St. George yes or no Correct. vote, um, and that is uh, whether or not to incorporate the area of St. George here in East Baton Rouge Parish. Uh, what sort of numbers are you, what are you looking at for this? So for St. George, what was interesting was when I looked at the data as of last night, which was, of course, the last day that you could turn in absentee votes, I saw that approximately approximately 12,000 had voted in the St. George area, which was roughly three times the turnout in 20, the 2015 primary. And since that vote was heavily Republican, that would suggest to me that it augurs well for St. George's passage. I'm thinking in the 60% range, but of course I would like to have some early vote and precinct data before I make that call. All right, interesting. We will definitely keep an eye on that race and several others. And uh, as I mentioned before, John will be providing some analysis for all of that. So let's send it back to you, Chad and Jean. All right, Fred and John, thank you very much. Of course, our team here at your local election headquarters spread out all over the Baton Rouge area and throughout the state of Louisiana. Of course, with the big governor's race, we have individuals with Governor John Bell Edwards, with Baton Rouge businessman Eddie Rasponi, and with Congressman Ralph Abraham up in Monroe, Louisiana, here tonight. And you hear that both of those uh, uh, Republican challengers are within a point of each other at, with these early numbers. Mm -hmm. We're going to set things out right now to uh, our own Kellyanne Biley, who is at Eddie Rasponi's headquarters right now. Now. Kellyanne? Having some technical audio difficulties right there with Kelly Ann Biley, but with the Eddie Rasponi campaign at LaBerge Casino and Hotel, that's right here in the Baton Rouge area. Of course, Eddie Rasponi billing himself as the political outsider. This entire gubernatorial campaign really saw an increase in numbers over the last few months with the latest polls coming out from John Kubion's JMC Analytics and Polling. And a lot of people in the Eddie Rasponi campaign really do believe that he can make the runoff here tonight. But of course, the numbers just continue to come in as we speak. All right, well, we get uh, Kellyanne's audio uh, figured out. We are going to head over to Harrison Golden, who is uh, with uh, Governor John Bell Edwards at the Renaissance Hotel. Harrison. John, good evening to you. Uh, the question is tonight, how good should the John Bell Edwards team be feeling tonight? Of course, we have the uh, LSU football Tigers on the TV right now, and in many ways, it's more of a football watch party right now. Of course, that's going to change once we get a, a clearer picture, once a few more precincts come in with that election vote. But for now, it's football time, and uh, we're going to be, again, looking through those numbers. But that question again, how good should the governor's team be feeling? That's a matter of whether the governor himself can get more than 50% getting to that threshold that would have him avoiding a November 16th runoff. The campaign themselves, uh, officials here telling me today uh, that they see a very visible chance that the governor may not have to fight in that November 16th race in five weeks from now, that he could win it outright tonight uh, in this governor's race between the two Republican challengers. Um, but again, that's really the atmosphere right now, a confident John Bell Edwards right now. Well, as we, again, look through these numbers right now uh, before we kind of get any sort of base of analysis. We're just kind of watching this football game emerge. Uh, but either way, it's all about keeping score, right? So we're going to be doing that uh, not just with football, but of course in this governor's race once those precincts come in and see if the governor, John Bell Edwards, can become the first Democratic governor in Louisiana to be reelected as a Democrat since Edwin Edwards, who, by the way, is in the audience here tonight at the Renaissance Hotel. He was the last one back in 1975, the last Democrat to win reelection. That could change tonight, though, guys. All right, Harrison, thanks so much. Of course, Congressman Ralph Abraham, one of those Republicans trying to unseat the governor, getting some big support this week from Vice President Mike Pence, and along with the governor, I mean, with the president who was here right. uh, just yesterday. 
um, and he's got his watch party going on in Monroe. And so many storylines with the congressman who, of course, according to ProPublica, and it's been pretty well stated, has missed many votes in Congress while campaigning for the governor's office here in Louisiana. For the very latest, let's go to our colleague Chelsea Jones, who joins us from Congressman Ralph Abraham's campaign up in Monroe. Chelsea, good evening. Good evening, Chad and John. That's right, I'm here on the seventh floor of ULM, and it is a very lively scene here. People are hopeful. I actually talked to Congressman Abraham's daughter, Ashley, and she's nervous but hopeful, and I think that's indicative of every supporter here. They're thinking he's going to bring this all the way home, at least into a runoff here. But it's been, like you said, a big week for Republicans in the state as the president, the vice president, even the president's son, all making stops in the Pelican state for one last ditch effort to unseat incumbent Governor John Bell Edwards. Edwards, and I'm going to be here all night long for updates here in Monroe. But I'm going to go ahead and toss it back to you guys in the studio. But for now, for your local election headquarters in Monroe, I'm Chelsea Jones. Chelsea, thank you very much. A lot of excitement there already. It really is exciting. Election day is so important, so huge. It shapes our local economy, community, and the, the future of our state. So it really is so important, and we're glad that y'all are with us here tonight. The election numbers, the results continue to file in as we speak. Yes, and our man with the numbers, Dion Guillory, here to bring us up to date on what's happening out there. Yeah, this is the command center right here where the numbers come through, and I give it to you. So they're still at 1% of all the votes coming in, all the numbers coming in. Governor John Bell Edwards. We're still holding on to a, a, a nice lead at this point, 42% of the vote. Ralph Abraham, this is different. We know that this is different right now. He is now in second place with 30% of the vote. Businessman Eddie Rispone, 26%. So there's a switch here from just a couple of minutes ago from when I talked to you the last time. So we see that it's so early. These they can switch back. We don't know what's going to happen. Those numbers are going to let us know what happens. All right, so we are, of course, going to continue to watch this. I also want you guys to see this. I've got my comfortable shoes on. I'm going to be standing here all night giving those numbers to you. Back to you. All right, looks like it might be a little bit of a ping pong game, just as predicted with uh, those two Republican challengers. It's definitely game. a marathon, so it's going to be a lot of fun to capture the moments as we go along. We will, of course, stream online at brproud.com throughout the evening, and we'll be with you time and time again over the next few hours here tonight. Yep, and for those of you watching the Notre Dame USC game, we'll be cutting in as we can mm -hmm. throughout the evening, but not interfering with your game, of course. But thank you again for joining us with your local alleged head, uh, headquarters, that is, with Louisiana Decides. 2019. We'll see y'all in just a bit.
All right, Dion Guillory here. We want to let you know that we are looking at the numbers. This is uh, Louisiana Decides 2019. Let's take a look at the governor's race. These numbers just coming in. 42% of the vote for jo Governor John Bell Edwards. Right now, Ralph Abraham, 31% of the vote. And Eddie Rispone, 26%. Um, the last time we looked at these numbers, Ralph Abraham's numbers actually went up. So that's a different, uh, that's a change from the last time we uh, looked at those earlier. All right, let's move on to the next race. This one, the lieutenant governor's race. Billy Nungesser, the incumbent here, 74% of the vote. Willie Jones, 26%, with 1% of the precincts reporting. Let's move over to the commissioner of insurance race, Jim Donilon. And Tim Temple, this is really close. It's probably the closest one we've seen so far. 54% of the vote for Jim Donilon. Tim Temple at 46% of the vote. All right, we're going to move over to the Secretary of State's race. Kyle Ardwan, 47%. Gwen Collins Green up 27%. And Thomas Kennedy the third at 20%. All right, next race here, the Attorney General's race. Jeff Landry, the incumbent here with a huge lead here, 72%. Of the vote here, Ike Jackson Jr. with 28%. We will move over to the treasurer's race. John Schroeder, 67% of the vote here. Derek Edwards, 29%. And Teresa Kinney with 4%. Still at 1% of the vote um, coming in at this point. All right, so these are the numbers that are really coming in. And uh, constitutional amendments, this is something that a lot of people really uh, were confused about, but this one is uh, tax exemptions for our continental shelf, um, and this one at no, 53% of the no's have this one uh, so far, but this is still early with only 1% of the precincts reporting, so this could change at any moment. And of course, we're going to continue to monitor these numbers and bring them to you because we know how elections work. These numbers change all the time, and we've seen that with a lot of these uh, races. This constitutional amendment, number two, amend education excellence fund. At this point, the no's have it, 53% of the, uh, the votes coming in from that 1% of the precincts voting. All right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, amendment number three, remedy for unconstitutional tax paid. At this point, 57% of the yeses have it, 43% of the noes. We, of course, are going to be here all night and bring you all these numbers as they continue to come in. Stay tuned.
Good Saturday evening. Welcome in, everybody. Chad Sabaty joined by the lovely Jean Burns. Jean, it's election night 2019. Louisiana decides. And we think about all the months of hard work, all the years, really, that have led up to this big night. Absolutely. A lot of people putting in so much work and all the voters getting out today. Everybody sitting back waiting for these numbers to come in. And actually, uh, our experts tonight are already talking about making some calls in some of these bigger races. Absolutely. Uh, we sent things over now to Fred Childers and John Cuvion, who have breakdown for us. That's right, John and Chad. As you mentioned, we are ready to make some calls. John, we've been looking at a couple of races. The one you see behind us here is the lieutenant governor's race. Are you ready to make this call? Billy Nungesser has started off the race with a very strong lead, and he has maintained it. And this is even after the Orleans Parish early vote of 26,000 has come in. So given that and the precinct vote I've seen thus far, I'm comfortable that Billy Nungesser will win by a comfortable margin. Okay, so you see him, uh, he has 69%. Uh, Willie Jones has 31 percent. So let's go to the treasurer's race. And I believe you said you were ready to call that one as well. John Schroeder also has a strong lead in that race. And the lead is strong enough to where I don't think that the remaining approximately 15 parishes of early vote, as well as the precinct vote, will substantially change that numbers because he's well above 60 percent. Okay, and uh, just to read off these numbers really quick, you got 61%, John Schroeder, the incumbent, uh, Derek Edwards, his Democratic challenger at 34%, and Teresa Kinney, uh, no party affiliation, she is only coming in at 5%. And uh, are you ready to call the attorney general's I race? am. Jeff Landry also has numbers that are almost as top heavy as Billy Nungesser's. And given that the two of them are more of the generic Republican vote and they're running that far ahead of the Republican candidates for governor, I'm comfortable calling uh, Jeff Landry the reelected attorney general. Okay. And uh, just a heads up, we are uh, digging deep on these numbers. You know, you've been watching these uh, come in as we have, and you're seeing that, you know, I think uh, we're at 13%. It's hard to tell anything with just 13 percent, but when you dig in as deep as John is and look at the parish level and these precinct levels, he can start reading the tea leaves, and we're getting some information on the governor's race that we hope to share with you very soon. And see, what's interesting about the governor's race, Fred, is that so you kind of have a dichotomy here when some of the larger parishes like Orleans and Jefferson, Governor Edwards is running fairly close to his 2015 numbers. The problem is you get outside those two parishes and you getting into the rural parishes and even the medium-sized parishes, I'm seeing huge drops in the order of 20 to 30 percent less than what he got in 2015. So that certainly does not bode well for the governor, although I'm still waiting to see some data from Bossier, St. Tammany, uh, East Baton Rouge, Livingston, and a few other larger parishes, El Lafayette as well. All right, speaking of those numbers, let's get uh, an update of those numbers with Dion Giller. Dion. Yes, and you guys are breaking them all down, but we still have some races that are a little too early to call. You guys touched on the governor's race, but let's look at it one more time because Governor John Bell Edwards still having a commanding lead here with 47 percent of the vote. But we've seen Ralph Abraham and Eddie Rispone, the, the, we saw a flip-flop earlier, and now we've seen the numbers get even closer again. Ralph Abraham with 26 percent of the vote right now, Eddie Rispone right on his tail with 25 percent. That's with 13 percent of the precincts coming in. So I, we really believe that for, for the rest of the night, we're going to see this flip-flop between these two Republican challengers to the governor for who may ultimately end up in what could be a runoff with the incumbent governor. All right, let's go on to the next race that we're waiting to see the numbers come in. Secretary of State Kyle Ardwin and Gwen Collins Greenup, they're the leaders here. Kyle Ardwin with 43% of the vote and Gwen Collins Greenup with 33%. Now, if I, my memory serves me correctly, she was a surprise last year in this race when it had to be a special election. And so this was uh, something that's uh, rumbling again. So we may see them in a runoff. We'll just see what happens here. Thomas Kennedy the third with 18% of the vote here. All right, let's move on to the next race. This is Commissioner of Agriculture and Forestry, Mike Strain, the incumbent here, 58% of the vote here, Marguerite Green with 20%, and Charlie Greer with 9%. This is basically what we've seen all night, the incumbent here, Mike Strain, having the lead here in this particular race. All right, let's move on to the next one, which is Commissioner of Insurance. This one is 
Pretty much the closest one we've seen tonight. Jim Donnellan, the incumbent with 55%, and Tim Temple with 45%. We've all seen the ads. This one was kind of one of the uh, one of the races where there was a lot of dirt thrown in this one, and so we see the results of these so far with 15%. We've just seen this number jump up. Just a couple of seconds ago, it was at 13%. Now this is at 15%. So this is the numbers now. Jim Donnellan, 55% again. Tim Temple at 45% of the um, of the um, vote coming in. And for 15 percent of the precincts reporting so far. One more uh, race here. Do we have one more? Maybe not. All right. So, oh, well, that's it. So, that's it because we've called some of the other ones. So, you know, it's live TV, folks. This is how it works. And so, this is the command center. This is where the numbers are going to come first, and I'm going to disperse them to you. Um, Matt, tell me where we're going next. All right, John and Chad, over to you because I've got some more numbers to crunch. All right, Dion, thank you very much. Of course, our audience right now watching us on BRProud.com, the free BR Proud app. If you haven't downloaded the free app, just go ahead and it's available in Google Play and the Apple App Store. You get all these great push alerts and instant analysis as well. And of course, the great analysis from John Cuvion. It's going to be a busy but very fun and exciting night here on election night. We will be here throughout the evening. We're going to be uh, bringing you updates here online. And uh, before we head out right now, we want to show you some of the uh, more from some of the other races as those numbers come in.